So this first section is all of my general release pairs that I've gathered, and this is actually the bulk of my collection. I know that general releases aren't the most exciting thing to look at, but I still think there are a lot of great pairs in kind of all these boxes behind me. So let's get right into it. All right, so I think we're gonna start out with the Yeezys. And I actually don't have that many Yeezys just because I feel like Yeezys aren't fully my style. First pair that we have here, these are the Clay Brown Yeezy. 500s. So nothing too special about these, but I think this is uh, actually a solid basketball shoe. Not bad at all. I, I think I was just very into like the rugged look of these. I think you'll probably notice the theme in my collection, very into like rugged sneakers or anything with like a more utility style vibe. Another easy 500. This one is actually the Taupe Light 500. This sneaker, nothing too, too special, but I do feel like they were my first Yeezy that actually hit off of Yeezy Supply. Very neutral sneaker, one that I decided to keep in my collection just because I do really like the color. I think the Yeezy 500 is probably one of my favorite Yeezy models. This is a pair of the 700 V1s. This is the only pair of 700s that I have. I've thought a lot about copying the Wave Runners for retail, but I still can't bring myself to drop like $300 for a pair of Wave Runners. And yeah, let me show you what these are. Just kidding. This is not the 700 V1, but this is a 700 V3 Azales. And I think this was just a easy grail for a really long time. So actually being able to cop this sneaker and get it in hand. I think this is just a keeper for the collection just because I still think this is a very cool sneaker. I definitely need to wear this pair a little bit more. Okay, and last two Yeezys in my collection, both foam runners. So I used to have four pairs of foam runners, but decided that's just way too many foam runners. Uh, the first one, the Onyx foam runners. I think this is actually a really great pair. It is one of, I think, the best colorways of the foam runners. Super easy to wear. Glad a lot of people are actually able to cop these as well. And the last pair, probably one that I never thought I would actually ever get my hands on, the Azale Easy foam runners. I think, if I'm not mistaken, this is the original colorway of the foam runners. I just think you can't really go wrong with the OG colorway of a new model, especially one as kind of groundbreaking as the foam runners were. And still kind of are because of the trends they set off. We are moving on to Nike Dunks. These are the Nike SB Dunk Paisleys. So just a great sneaker. I don't have too many SB Dunk lows in my collection, but I think this is definitely one that I am aiming to keep. Just really like the design of this one. Oh, okay. These are a recent release and I actually ended up doubling up on this colorway. These are the Dunk High Blue Chills. So you might be wondering, why would I double up on this general release, especially since it's a Dunk High? I do feel like this is a very underrated sneaker. Anything with like a UNC color, I am just a huge fan of. This is one of my favorite colors on a sneaker and also in one of my favorite color blockings. Another Dunk High. These are the Noble Green Dunk Highs, AKA the Australia Dunk Highs. Also one that I think is slept on. I feel like Dunks, Dunk Lows and Dunk Highs in this color blocking, you just really can't go wrong. Love the Michigan State Green color as well on the Dunk Highs. One more for you. This is the University Red Dunk High in that same classic color blocking. And this is also known as the St. John color of the Dunks. Uh, just basically University Red. I think it looks really great. It's a nice statement sneaker to have on foot. All right, the final uh, Dunk for the general release section. We have the Teal Dunk Lows. And again, this color blocking, you can't really go wrong. I'm just a big fan of Dunks uh, whenever they release in this color. Anytime I can get a Dunk Low in this color blocking in kind of a nice shade, I will definitely probably cop. I, I think I'm reaching the limits of like how many Dunks I really need in my collection. This is probably one of the last keepers. I, I really like this shade of teal on this pair. We are now moving on to Jordan 1s, one of my more successful videos in terms of styling. One of my favorite Jordan 1s in my collection. Honestly, not a big Jordan 1 guy. This first pair is the Jordan 1 High Gore-Tex in the Bone colorway. 
I still have this pair. Um, I think it's a criminally underrated Jordan 1. Super clean, super easy to style, and again, I'm just a sucker for anything that's more utility based. And having a Gore-Tex Jordan 1 is something I, I never thought could ever happen. Just kind of like a unicorn in its existence, to, to me at least. Next Jordan 1. This is also a very clean colorway. Definitely one that I think will go up in value just because of how clean and simple it is. Regardless of price, I think it's a great sneaker and I think one of the few Jordan 1s I'll probably keep in my collection. And so it is the white and bleached coral Jordan 1 High. I think just a really great sneaker, super easy to wear. Being like a shorter person, I don't really wear Jordan 1 Highs too much because they kind of make me look even shorter because of their high top cut. If I were to keep some in the collection, I think this is definitely one of those. And next up here, another Jordan 1 that released this year, but this time, a low. And this is the dark powder blue Jordan 1 low. One that I decided to keep. I feel like this is still a very solid pair. But yeah, anything with like UNC blue, dark powder blue, I'm, I'm always for it. And moving on to two pairs of Jordan 1 low golfs. And I keep blathering on about the UNC colorway, but I love this color blocking with any sort of UNC blue. Great sneaker. These do run a little bit big, so if you end up looking for the Jordan 1 Low Golf, definitely highly recommend half size down. And the other golf that I have is in the shadow colorway. So again, another very classic color, one that I feel like you can't really go wrong with. Since resaw and everything for the OG form of the Jordan 1 Lows is so high, I'm okay with settling for the golf lows. You can't really tell on feet. These are very clean and I actually loved how easy these were to wear. And this next one is the Jordan 1 High in the metallic purple colorway. One that I feel like a lot of people don't really like just because, there, again, there's so many Jordan 1s, but I just thought it was funny because these are in the exact same color blocking as the Amo Manier Jordan 1s. And I know metallic purple isn't for everyone, but honestly, because it's a mostly white sneaker, it's actually a lot easier to wear uh, than they seem when you first kind of take them out of the box. I do have one more Jordan 1 Low, and these are the Jordan 1 Low in the neutral gray colorway. And honestly, when these first came out, I wasn't a big fan of them. I even mentioned in a video that I thought these were like pretty boring. I kind of, I, I pulled the flip-flop card on these. They're just very easy to wear. Uh, I think a very clean sneaker, as long as you can keep them clean and not beat them up like too, too much. But yeah, I, I think a great sneaker and one that I'm happy to have. Uh, the last pair of Jordan 1s. These are the Jordan 1 High in the patent bread colorway. These are definitely not everyone's cup of tea, but I do feel like the bread color blocking and colorway is just, it's a classic and it's so nice. And I know the patent leather is what's turning off a lot of people on these. I feel like these are criminally underrated and I feel like people will eventually come around on these. Awesome sneaker. I, I think one that I'm probably keeping until I can probably get my hands on the actual OG bread Jordan ones. Alright, so all the Jordan ones are done, now we're just moving on to some general release Jordans. First pair that I thought would be cool to kind of showcase are the Jordan 13s in the cherry colorway from 2010. So this is the pair that I bought back in high school and they're still with me. They are super beat up, I've hooped in these, I've, well I've probably not worn these casually. This is one that I can't wait for this sneaker to come out again. I know they came out somewhat recently, which is one I'm, I'm really looking to re-up on. Kind of a weird one, uh, these are not black cement threes, these are actually red cement Jordan threes that came out I think in 2018 or 2019. I ended up buying them and customizing them to, to be like custom black cement threes. I think overall it turned out pretty well. The only thing you can see, the lace holes, I was way too lazy to paint those red. They kind of crack uh, along the creases. Overall, this is a pretty fun project for myself. This is like a cheap way for me to get a pair of Boxman 3s into the collection. Recently just came out 
cherry red 11s. I love this sneaker. I know it's a little bit harder to wear and that 11s aren't as popular as they used to be. I just feel like this is such a pretty sneaker. I feel like people were also waiting for cherry 11 highs for the longest time and it just so happens that it's not a very popular sneaker or, or colorway anymore. One that I'm definitely still a big fan of. I still love the 11s and whenever I can get the 11s in a high top format, definitely gonna try to do so. Jordan 5, Fire Reds. So the resurrection of Jordans when kind of the last dance came out. Uh, I think these released in the midst of that. Yeah, somehow caught these for way under retail. I think these are for like 140. Thank you, Cody. I still love this pair. Again, any OG colorway of a classic Jordan, you really can't go wrong. And onto a sneaker that should have been a lot more hyped when they came out. These are the Lightning Jordan 4s. Even though it's a very bright sneaker, they're actually very easy to wear and style. I also feel like these are still a little bit underrated. Great sneaker, one that I think I'll, I'll keep in my collection just because of how unique having like a bright yellow Jordan is. All right, next up, I think this is probably one of the best releases in the past year. This is the Midnight Navy Jordan 4. So I actually missed out on these for the most part during their release, but I was actually able to get a pair thanks to just a community member on Soul Savvy. So thank you, Soul Savvy, and thank you to Chris. I don't know if you watch these, but thank you so much. This is such a nice deal to be able to get this pair for retail. And I really love these, and I feel like this is just a keeper in my collection. Another Jordan 4, Military Black Jordan 4s. Also one of the better releases of this past year. Clean colorway on the Jordan 4. Regardless of the hype on Jordan 4s right now, I feel like this is just a very nice sneaker. Super clean, super easy to wear. Probably wear it every day if you wanted to. Up next, Jordan 12s in the Royalty re-release, but these are basically Jordan 12 Taxis. I love this pair just because I had a pair of the Taxi Retros back in high school. Unfortunately sold those to probably pay for some video games or like an Xbox or something, but really happy to actually get uh, a Taxi 12 back in my collection. And next, another 11. As you can see, these are the cool gray 11s. Super nice sneaker. These came out when I was in high school and it just so happens that as I'm getting back into sneakers now, these happen to retro. So. Also very happy to be able to have this pair in my collection just because they were probably impossible to get back in high school. I I wasn't trying to camp out or anything. All right, also a very recent release. I think these literally just came in today, but these are the Jordan 13 UNCs. Again, love UNC blue, can't go wrong. One thing that was weird about the release was like, why did Nike show product photos with like this blue being completely off because this blue shade is a way lighter shade than what they actually show. Anyways, Nike ran aside. I love this pair and uh, it's probably a keeper. All right, next up, Neapolitan 3s. One that I thought I actually missed out when they dropped, uh, I think this past year, this past summer, thanks to Soul Savvy and thanks to the Drops app, I was actually able to scoop these up when they dropped just because it was a, a smaller boutique that dropped them, probably thanks to the speed of the Drops app. So. Again, big shout out to Soul Savvy. Check out the Drops affiliate link down below if you are interested. Next up, an interesting one, uh, Jordan 3 in the fire red colorway. Although this one, as you can see, is customized in this panel just because I felt like it was just too much red wrapping around. That might be blasphemous to kind of any OG heads out there, but I do feel like it's a little bit more clean with that white panel instead of the red. I'm so excited that they fixed the shape of Jordan 3s. All right, up next, we got a stanky old pair of yeah. Jordan 7 flips that helped me uh, kickstart this channel. So uh, this is probably a keeper in my collection just because of that fact, but I have decided to use these for basketball. So these are kind of like, these are pretty beat up even after like two wears. Not a bad hoop shoe, uh, not a bad sneaker overall, honestly. Just kind of a, a more sentimental sneaker for myself. Fun story, well, kind of a fun, not really a fun story, but Story with the Jordan 11 Columbia Lowe's. A very clean sneaker. Um, again, one more for like the summertime. These actually were like a missing package for me for like a week. And I thought that I just never would get my hands on them. But one day a FedEx guy just turned up and uh, said like, hey, are you missing a package? Yeah, I am. I, I felt like these were like lost to FedEx as I'm sure a lot of you might have had bad experiences with FedEx before. All right, one of the least popular Jordan models, the Jordan 9. Just a very nice sneaker. One that I feel like is also criminally underrated. This one's also very easy to wear. I love how the 9s kind of give you that like sneaker boot kind of vibe. 
I, I really like this pair, a really great sneaker. Up next, this is kind of a consolation Jordan, the Jordan 5 Anthracite. This is a consolation sneaker just because the OG colorway of the metallic silver fives, that is definitely a grail that keeps slipping away from me. These dropped, I think, back in 2020. I was happy to, to pick these up for retail as well. They're very close to the metallic fives, like not quite. I think they'll kind of do in the meantime. Another consolation Jordan 5, the Jordan 5 Gore-Tex. This is such a great sneaker. I um, actually wore them on a trip recently. They do just fine in like the snow and they definitely are waterproof. Yeah, I don't know how they made like waterproof suede. This is it. A really durable Jordan 5. I think this is as close to like metallic vibes I'm gonna get anytime soon. I, I think probably one of my favorites in the collections, at least in this GR segment uh, right now. All right. Last two Jordans for you, Jordan 3 in the Desert Elephant colorway. Also a very underrated sneaker, super clean Jordan 3. I, I can't believe these are so easy to cop for retail. Much better on foot than they are in hand. And last Jordan for you, nothing super special, but these are the Midnight Navy Jordan 6s. Just a super clean sneaker. Also one that I feel like is super underrated. I don't know why people don't like Jordan 6s anymore. I think a very cool model. It's very classic, a uh, little bit harder to style, but in this color, any clean Jordan, I feel like, is like a good pickup and a good keeper in your collection. to some outdoorsy sneakers. This is the Nike Air Lahar Low. This is an interesting one. I feel like most people won't like this sneaker. These are really cool. Yeah, and anything with like more of a outdoorsy, rugged or like utility thing, all for it. And I, I think these are really great for styling like a sneaker boot. And next, I don't even know if I should show this one because I think I was trying to sell this pair for a little bit, but these are the Air Force One Wheat CO.JPs retro from, I think 2020? I don't know. I, I felt like a Wheat Air Force One would have been something I would kind of gravitate towards and, and wear a lot, but I really don't wear this pair that much. Still a pretty cool sneaker, just if I'm not wearing it, I'm probably gonna flip it. And we are moving on to some LeBrons. Starting out with these, the LeBron 20s in the launch colorway. I think these are also known as the Time Machine. I think one of Nike's best new models in like years. Next up, I think one that people really don't like anymore or just kind of like slept on. These are the LeBron 8 Low Miami Nights. Actually, to be super nerdy about it, the LeBron 8 V2 Low in the Miami Nights colorway. I did a whole video on these, but I think this is one for the collection. Just one that you really couldn't get back in the day, but very cool that Nike retroed them and big fan of these as well. Uh, really great summer shoe. Okay. So these are the South Beach Nike LeBron 8, the V1, the original LeBron 8. These have been a grill for the longest time, just because back when I was getting into sneakers, I started by reading like Nice Kicks and like other sneaker blogs. And these are basically like the unobtainable sneaker at the time. So back in like 2010. I just think it was so cool that these retroed and that they were just such a big GR and that no one cares about them anymore. Okay, we're moving on to some Air Maxes. Honestly, this was probably the pair that kind of really got me back into sneakers back in 2020. It's the Air Max 90 Infrared. Arguably one of the greatest shoes and one of the greatest colorways of all time. For me, just a lot of memories of also wanting to get this shoe. Maybe a lot of my sneaker collection is a lot of just repressed wants and things I couldn't get back in the day. And next one on here, the Air Max 95. Sakura, I think is what they're dubbed. Just a big Air Max 95 GR from, I think, 2021. Also, in my opinion, a very great sneaker. Really love the Air Max 95s. So whenever there's this gradient colorway, always a big fan of that. I just like how there are subtle details on the sneaker, like reflective cherry blossom details on the back and then on the bottom, cherry blossom details in red as well. Just a very cool GR, kind of uh, holds a sentimental place in my collection as well. Okay, another GR Air Max 95, this one from this year. And uh, these are the Anatomy of Air Air Max 95s. I feel like these are super slept on too, just like, why don't people like beautiful Air Max 95s? But I guess the kids these days don't really like 
Air Max 95s? I don't know. I think these are on sale nowadays and I, I just don't get how. Last but not least, not really an Air Max, but it's a Nike Air Trainer one in the OG chlorophyll colorway. And this is from this year. These are super beat up because I took these hooping outdoors. I've only hooped at them like two or three times and they're already pretty much like beat, like to the ground. Just like the creasing and like the dirt. I don't know, they, they're pretty grimy. So moving on to some New Balance GRs. Probably one of the more hated sneakers in like fashion community maybe because they're too mainstream, but the very mainstream New Balance, the 550s. And these are in their neutral gray colorway that I thought was just a little bit too boring. I ended up customizing this a little bit with aged white detailing on the New Balance logo and then colored in the heel and this area. Cool little custom. Uh, I think they look way cooler like this. If you told me it was like an ALD collab, I would totally believe you. Next up, this is a classic. This is a 990 V3 in classic New Balance gray. These are a little bit special. I don't remember if these are like the anniversary edition. They do have the red tab here that says version 3. Um, I think the GR pairs that release nowadays don't have that red tab. Having that red tab and the red New Balance logo at the heel is what makes this pair a little bit more special. So if you care about the details and if you're super nerdy about it like I am, I think this is a very cool version of the 990 V3 to have. And this is a pair that I'm very happy that people slept on. This is the Mirage Gray New Balance 2002R protection pack. These are so clean. I think I got these below retail at like 120 and that is a huge steal for the quality of materials that you're getting, the craftsmanship on this model. And honestly, this sneaker in this colorway looks so good on feet. It's so easy to style. I think also one of the sneakers where if this was the only one I had in my collection, I would be very happy. Another 2002 R. These are the Phantoms. This is a cool pair, but I kind of use these as beaters. Uh, this is my running shoe. So whenever I go out for a run, for a workout, this is usually what's on feet just because they're comfortable. It's like a firm cushion. Uh, originally, these were kind of a consolation prize for the black and gray 992s that I kind of missed out on, but they kind of don't really hit the same, even though they're very cool of like vintage midsole. And it's not the same as having, I think that 992 in the black and gray. Oh my God, I'm sweating. Probably a hot take. Okay, it is way too hot. I have the splatter on the 12s, the wing stop joints. 